All right, thank you. Uh, this is Chen Lei Wu from, uh, from uh, Scripps, San Diego. Um, so since this is a like, fail session, I think I'm going to focus on the fail APIs and uh, both in terms of how to make the, uh, how to generate the API, say from the data, data to creating a, a um, fail API, or in terms of like a, we have a set of the API, how to make those API fail and interpretable and connect each other. So, okay. So, um, first, first project, like I, I have a, like two projects in my title, by, both Bisings and Smart API. Those are the two highly related API, uh, projects we are doing. And first about this Bisings API, is a, is a, basically this is like a three type of things we are doing. So one is uh, we, we build a collection of the, collection of the APIs. Namely, like my gene.info, my variant.info, and my chem.info, and another is, a, is just focus on the taxonomy. As you can see, the API we build is uh, entity specific. Like a gene is everything about gene. You, 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 it's a REST API, you give a gene ID, or give like any, any gene related query term, it will return the match to the gene with all the aggregated information about, the, about this gene. That's it. And, um, and the variant is the same. You give like the interval and or give like a variant position and wrap out, it will give you all the information from, the, from this variant. Or, or aggregated together, we build a mechanism to keep everything up to date. And we build a high performance backend so that you can have a very good, like a, a very good um, uh, usability out of this APIs. Um, that's, that's what we, we provide. And the second one is that we build a so-called like Bison's SDK. So that means if you have a data, data store, so you want to convert it to a quick like a RT, uh, like a REST API, you can use uh, as this SDK to abstract a lot of uh, repeated things. Right? For example, you want to like a monitor the data source, and it, um, you still need to write a parser, of course, and then uh, deploy it to a cloud and then make it like a well-formed uh, the REST API, all these repetitive things we can abstract out for you. And then third part is gonna be the my main uh, focus for this talk is that we want to like we want to make this API work together. And it's like a fail API and an interpol API. So we build an API, there's other people to build all the all kinds of API as well. And then we need some kind of a mechanism to link them together. So that's how this is a in um, the marriage between the Biosynths API and the, what we uh, started like a smart API and started by uh, Michelle and I. Yeah. Oops. Okay, here's a, just another overview of the three main uh, API we provided in the uh, Biosynths uh, project. And um, you can go to uh, each website to get more information about this API. And I, I, I want to mention that those APIs um, provide very Quick and simple to use access, and it has been very popular among the among the community. Currently, the MyGene one is the first one created. I right now, have uh, between uh, like about eight million requests every month, and uh, from about three thousand, uh, also like the unique APIs. And the variant is a later is the second one we launched. And now have a one million requests per month, about the one thousand to two thousand unique IPs. And then recently, we launched this MyChem that info focused on the chemical and the drug, uh, drug compounds, and we just launched and hope to see the user coming uh, as we go. And I also want to mention API is like a, our first class citizen in our project. So we want to focus on API and let a user to use our API to build their applications. And, but we will focus on the API itself. And this is an overview of the SDK. And mainly three part of the things we want, uh, want to abstract from the developer. A is like a monitor uh, the data source, be able to merge the data source and uh, do the indexing, and other build the web application, and other is like the cloud uh, deployment. I, I won't go into the details, and there's a website you can take a look. Okay, so now um, when we do all this, like a, uh, do a, like a real, uh, in the real world of translational medicine uh, project, we often need to aggregate all kinds of data, right? And we have the data from our Biosense APIs, and also need to have the data from other APIs, from, from like the Civic, Reacton, Weak Pathway, Uniprobe, all, all this. And we want to make them kind of like a link together. And, but typically, this is actually not an easy task, right? For example, one uh, common, and, but, but this common thing is like, a, for example, those JSON APIs, the same thing, same ID, for example, the ensemble, ID, it probably means like different field in this output, in this JSON output, right? So 
you can see here is the ID and then in my gene actually ensemble that gene is an ensemble that gene ID from the myvarian.info. So clearly we needed some kind of the metadata about this API response and so that we can align them together um, basically mark them like they are the same, right? So um, one thing as a several uh, talk, previous talk mentioned is like the JSON-LD, JSON for linked data. Since the, um, since the output of our API is JSON, the JSON-LD is quite a reasonable things to use. And the way we use the JSON-LD is really just a very, very, very simplistic, mainly because our purpose here is just to use, use the JSON-LD as a mechanism to label the JSON field. Say this is what, this is what. And we use the, like a uh, identifies.org and UI if possible. And if not, if, if the, something not covered by identifies.org, we try to find it some, somewhere else, like the other ontology or other, um, other, other UIs commonly used by, the, by this community. So, um, okay, once we have the JSON LD, then you can do the uh, variety of the uh, transformation provided by JSON LD. One important, one interesting thing is like this is a button here called end quartz format that actually converts this almost like the triple triple format. And then regardless of your JSON structure is, it basically gives you like a flat view. So if I want to extract the like the ensemble ID, I just go through this list, try to find a row with identifies.org slash ensemble, then you get the value, right? And this value is somehow associated with uh, with your uh, uh, this particular gene object. Right, so then you know this gene object is equivalent to this ensemble gene ID. That's basically the how the JSON ID works, at least in our case. Okay, the second thing is like a, you, we want to we want an API metadata. So tell us how your API is formulated, how to make the call, what's the parameter, all these things. Like, so um, there's many standards, and then recently like, I think the whole community, not just the bio bioinformatics community, the whole like a uh, um, Informatics community now sort of like a cons um, come together and say, okay, let's just do the open API standard. And I think that that's basically how the community converged together right now. So recently they released a so-called like version three of open API specs. So it's essentially just look like this. You can do a JSON format or a YAML format and providing all the information. It's just a metadata, it's a standard, as so people can just uh, uh, follow that and uh, um, they have all kinds of a tool to the, do the authoring. And now, um, for our uh, smart API, is basically built on top of these two, like a community standard, both JSON LD and Open API specification specifications. Right? Um, first thing, um, smart API defines an extension uh, on top of the existing uh, existing uh, Open API specs. For example, here's a, one example. Like um, smart uh, Open API defines the content. I can put my uh, my name, my email. That's provided. But it doesn't give you like the other uh, other metadata. For example, you can put like the all oh, your ORCID ID. You can do like a so-called X uh, extension, X ID. You can define like a X dash GitHub. You can give the GitHub account all this type of information about the uh, extra information about your API. So that's something we define in the Smart API. And then uh, besides those generic uh, metadata, we also uh, we're particularly interested in, in the providing the biological uh, domain-specific metadata. Right? So, for example, here we define so-called like X value type. That's uh, that's attached to the parameter. Here's the Q parameter. This means give a list of the uh, identifiers.org UI. That means this parameter actually accepts this type of uh, um, ID or, uh, or input type to this API. So then you know this API accepts those. And we also have another one to um, let you to uh, describe the what's uh, what's uh, what's your output actually uh, represent. For example, using the JSON LD context. Right? So, and we also provide other tooling. Some, uh, for example, the metadata editor. And this is an editor built on top of the Open API's original editor, but adding the validation uh, you, uh, for those smart API extensions. So you can do this authoring right here. Uh, all based on like the, this example we provide, modified to your need, and it will give you the a nice visual, a uh, nice um, almost like API documentation generated, and also do the validation for the API specification, and also the, um, the including that um, API uh, extent, smart API extension we define. So, and this is yeah, I, I want to mention like the, uh, this is done by the Shima and the previous specification mostly spearheaded by the Evan Party. 
Um, okay, uh, another nice feature is about the, um, this, um, this auto-completion. That's something, a uh, unique feature we added to the editor. For example, a lot of field, you can, it's kind of like you don't remember what, what field is available for that, uh, for that metadata field, right? We added the auto-completion feature, and as we add in the more APIs, those fields, those auto-completed values actually come from those populated existing uh, API metadata. So you can do the easy uh, metadata authoring. So, okay. So, of course, we will, uh, we will provide a searchable API registry. People can search and find the, find the, uh, the API. And you can notice, like, we actually, you can search against those input type and output type. Um, okay, this is another, another tool developed by the Trish, and it's an API response profile. So if you have a JSON-LD um, API, you can use this tool to kind of like help you to map your field to the identifies.org and UIs. Uh, it will do a best guess of some. You probably need to like uh, select the job done, pick the manually pick the, the actual accurate one. But if you can, if if some like a field, you can guess either from the value regex or the value name, uh, or other like field name, it can be automatically identified. It's a uh, to, uh, to the uh, identifiers.org UIs. Okay, that's another handy tool we provide. And finally, I think it'll be uh, another thing um, is a Kevin developed this so-called API Explorer. That's actually just to put all this metadata so far we aggregated, and uh, we put this um, um, API interoperability actually in action. Okay? So for example, uh, if you say, if I wanted the gene ID uh, if I have the variant ID, I want to get it associated with uh, clean the clinical, clinical trial ID. So I have to go through a few like the APIs to finally from, um, from this H from variant and go to the associated uh, clinical trial. So that's, that's basically the idea. And I think I have the time to probably can play this uh, screencast. Kevin, uh, Kevin did it. And because the, this is a still very active develop the um, application so i think the um yeah yeah this is screencast that is safer okay so here's just to give you a view of the uh, the api this api and those are the endpoint and the outside is uh, basically this endpoint is supportable kind of the uh, input and um, input that you provide it right so okay so that's the, like the overall api view and if you select it here say if i wanted the simple case will be the okay if i do the gene id Say go to which one? Let's say I think this is probably just the symbol, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see. Okay, from gene ID to gene symbol, that goes through this. This is like a minimal uh, example. Okay. So okay. Once you have this, you know this pass, and you can input your uh, like an input value. Say one one seven, one 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 eight. Then it will automatically do this query. Of course, here is just a one one API call. That's like a minimal example not really very interesting and here I think uh, Kevin just tried to like a demo you can actually put in the uh, multiple ID and it can do the batch query right based on the API metadata provided by the by the API so now you have the three gene have all this um, symbols again through that uh, through that API okay and as you can see even this is like a simple simple example but you can have like a have a generic way of doing that and this one probably more expensive and more more interesting from a GID, I think all the way to DB SNP RSID associated to this gene. Right? So now you can have the three paths. And here you can highlight the just the one pass here. And now you can put in the uh, this input of uh, three genes and click the submit. It will do the do this actual query. And let's see what's the result. Okay, let's wait for the refresh. Okay, there you get it like all the gene and go through the gene symbol um, and it go all the way goes through the, uh, get to the like, uh, associated RSID, DBSNIP ID, right? So here's all, all, all the, uh, I think this is a still the work in progress and, but as you can see the idea, that that's the basic idea we, uh, we developed here. Okay, I think that's it. And here I think what, what Kevin wanted to do is just to make it looks better. And he's uh, still working on the uh, layout for this visualization. Um, okay, I think the, um, 
first, uh, I want to mention this is my uh, first uh, biohackathon uh, um, experience. So far, it's a very, uh, very exciting. And I think that and I'd like to um, invite you to join us to uh, smartify the biological APIs. If you have a data you'd like to create in the API, we can talk about it, like I tried the uh, Bison's SDK to easily deploy the, your data to an uh, API. And also can provide in the JSON-LD context, make it a little, uh, more uh, semantically annotated. And I also want to mention like that semantic annotations doesn't have to be done by the developer, right? It's really, like the previous talk we discussed, is it really can be done by other. And uh, we use it, you can put it into the, like a GitHub and a smart API just to do like a, a URL. You can register as a URL, right? So it can be done like a collab collaboratively by the uh, com community. And you're welcome to uh, talk to us and um, talk to me, talk to Michelle here. And uh, yeah, and we, we have a plan to work to work in the smart API. So you're welcome to join us. And just uh, this is uh, just uh, the final uh, final slides. And it is a, a license team led by Andrew, Sue, and me. And this is our uh, smart API team uh, led by both uh, Michelle and I. And we have a group of people working together here. And this is our campus. And I also want to mention if you are really motivated after this hackathon and want to continue your coding at this beautiful California coastline, you're welcome to uh, contact us. All right, thank you.